This was just an exceedingly pleasant trip on Air France Hop, something that really can't be said about all regionals. Hi there, my name is Kevin, and I make honest and to the point narrated trip reports about flights and hotels all over the world. This is episode 126, flying on the channel's 24th airline in business class on board an Embraer 190 from Ibiza to Paris. The full story starts in 10 seconds. Welcome to Ibiza. It's been fun, but it's been hotter than hell, and if I'm honest, I am a bit happy to be flying north for a bit of respite. Flying from Ibiza to Amsterdam during peak summer season is easy peasy, with up to 13 daily non-stop flights on six different airlines. But where's the fun in flying direct? So today's flight to Paris is the first of three legs over the next 19 hours to get me there. If you'd like to know the exact fare that I paid for this flight or my next five videos in queue, please check out the description below. With my taxi booked ahead of time, arriving at the terminal today wasn't that much of a hassle. Given all of the chaos at European airports this past summer, I arrived around three hours ahead of schedule, but Air France check-in was nowhere to be seen, not opening until much later. So I just walked around for a bit, thinking about my next riddle. So here we go. What do hyperactive sloths and sponsored unbiased reviews have in common? Well, obviously both of them don't exist. See, the thing is, I don't think it's physically possible to give an honest review of a company who has at any point showered you with gifts or just outright paid for your flight. Advertisements that masquerade as reviews are all too common these days, but you won't find them here. Today and every day, you're going to hear my own honest opinion and nothing more, because this flight is 100% self-funded. So whether you're researching your next trip, reliving a past trip, or just looking for a bit of inspiration, I hope you'll find my content valuable enough to give the channel a subscription, and don't forget to turn on notifications. If you'd like to take this relationship a step further, a link to my Patreon is also in the description below. As always, y'all are the sponsors of this video, so I thank you in advance for stopping by. Once through, we were spit out into what amounts to a small but busy terminal, the majority of which is devoted to Shagan's own flights. I headed to the Cap de Falco lounge, which at the time was hosting some SkyTeam business class passengers, as well as many others. When I arrived, there was just a couple people in the queue. When I left though, there was a line 20 people deep waiting outside as the lounge was at capacity. The lounge has a single room with a variety of seating options and some basic food options on offer. A highlight was a carafe of a thick goop, simply labeled vegetarian soup. I spent most of my time watching a plethora of people learning how to open bottles on a fridge-mounted bottle opener. A bit about today's airline. Air France Hop, formerly known as Hop, that's Hop with an exclamation point, is a regional airline that flies on behalf of Air France, similar to how Envoy flies for American Airlines. They currently have a fleet of 41 regional jets, with both Embraer 170s and 190s on offer, as well as some CRJ-1000s which are meant to be retired at the end of this year. Their focus cities are Lyon and Paris. Here's our two-year-old Embraer 190 landing now on its way in from Paris. As Ibiza as a whole is a very seasonal destination, Hop operates this flight nine or ten times a week from April to October. Time to head to the gate. Despite a quickly swelling gaggle of passengers pretending they've never flown before surrounding the gate area, boarding was actually efficient and organized. Business class and other Sky Priority guests were called first so that we could stand at the bottom of the stairs and, you know, wait 10 minutes for everyone else since we all boarded the same bus. Let's take a quick look at today's flight stats. We'd be taking off 20 minutes late and heading up to 36,000 feet for our 700 mile journey north to Paris, landing five minutes ahead of schedule. Despite how much I fly, I am very rarely on regional airlines. And so today was, I think my very first Embraer flight. And I absolutely had no idea how good she looked up close from the ground. On this three week long trip, because of all the problems with lost baggage in Europe, I used only carry-on luggage which consists of a spinner bag and a small backpack. 
My spinner bag I love dearly because it's designed to be extra short and a little bit fatter than normal, which is great because most check-in agents would never imagine that it actually weighs 40 pounds, with a lot of my equipment and hard drives inside. So as I began to put it in the overhead bin, my heart sank and I quickly saw myself as a real life meme, trying to stuff my bag into a bin that was way too small. I honestly didn't even think about how much smaller these bins would be, rookie mistake I know. Because of what's inside my bag, I truly cannot check it in. Lucky for me, a very friendly purser stopped the line of passengers boarding and told me to put the bag in the cavernous forward storage bin, which could comfortably fit a baby elephant or two. Crisis averted, I settled into my seat three Foxtrot. I look forward to all the comments on all of my European business class flights, telling me how much it sucks because their seats are normal economy seats. And yes, that's correct but it's simply a different product, nothing more. The only downside today is that Air France does not block the adjacent seats on two x two aircraft in business class. In case you didn't know, the middle or adjacent seat is normally blocked on intra-European flights in business class in Airbus and Boeing aircraft. There were very thankfully individual air vents and you can see here how the well-placed curve in the fuselage makes for very happy elbows. There wasn't actually any pushback. Our parking spot was such that we could just pull straight out of it and head to the runway for departure. Our route today would take us due north over the Pyrenees and into metropolitan France. The spool up and take off are up next. Hop aircraft are not equipped with ovens and there is generally not a choice of food, two things that I was fully expecting. What I wasn't expecting though was that the only option for today's flight would be fish. Cold fish. As we crossed the coast, the meal was nicely presented on a single tray along with the cheese course, fresh bread and I believe an apricot dessert. Let me tell you. This meal was absolutely delicious for two very distinct reasons. First, it was truly very tasty and even the bread was still fresh, and the cheese is never a bad idea. What made it all the better though was not a single thing on the tray was processed or packaged, something that I can't stand about a lot of flights in to or from the US. Full marks and then some for this service. That said, this was a sub two hour flight, so after lunch, I watched an episode of the Great British Baking Show, as one does, and halfway into it, we were already on final approach into Charles de Gaulle, with some beautiful views of Paris below. We taxied to a terminal that I didn't even know existed and got some up close and personal views of our aircraft. From Terminal 2G, you can catch a bus transfer to any other terminal, which I did. before I was deposited into Terminal 2F, my favorite terminal in Europe, which I'll gush about in my next video. For now, let's head into the flip-flop score. It was just about as good as it could possibly be for a regional intra-Europe flight. Comfortable lounge, great food, comfortable seat, on-time arrival, 
what what more do you need? I'll tell you what I need. I need you to click that thumbs up button and subscribe so that you don't miss my next trip report, which was even better than today's, on an Air France A220 up to Helsinki.